this is post 203 class of uh, University of Abuja Center for Distance Learning and uh, Continuing Education. It is titled Introduction to Political Analysis, a true credit unit course and um, the name of the facilitator is Bawa Mohammed. Office address, Department of Political Science and International Relations, Center for Distance Learning and Continuing Education, Main Campus, Airport Road, Abuja. And uh, the mobile number is 0806-550-9882. Email mbawa09 at gmail.com. Once again, let me sound a note of caution here for the purpose of efficient communication. The email is mbawafigure09 at gmail.com, not 09. If you use 09, there will be no communication. So once again, the email address is mbawa09 at gmail.com. Office hours, Tuesday and Wednesday every week, 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Online hours, instructor will be available for consultation during the office hours and contacts through the email or rather the e-tutor support. Now, the general overview of the lecture, as indicated earlier on, it is an introductory course on political analysis. We will equally look at approaches of political analysis, scientific quest in political science, the nature of political science discipline as an intellectual enterprise, political systems and structure of government, and uh, some key processes and activities that can be employed in the search for knowledge generally about politics. At the end of this course, uh, we expect that our students should have a broad overview of the nature of inquiry an explanation of political science. Appreciate some of the key approaches and theories currently popular in the study of politics, particularly those approaches which form the foundation for political analysis. And of course, uh, we have some recommended study textbooks and um, external resources. Uh, if you are opportune to lay your hands on Post 203 monograph of CDL and E, Unit 1 and 2 of University of Abuja Press. Elements of Politics, edited by Remy Anifooshe and Francis Enemo of Sam Uruansi Publications, 1989. It is very, very important. It is key uh, in the study of political analysis. Now, the method of assessment is as follows. There will be two tutor-marked assignments and a computer-based test throughout the course in addition to a final examination. An assessment will be given at the end of the class and submission will be on the due date. Other TMA will be in the form of individual assignments and group assignments. And of course, these are meant to be a study material for the CBT and the final examinations. No late homework will be accepted. Please take note. It is very, very important. No late homework will be accepted. Students are expected to submit what they have at the time it is due. Once it is due, whatever you have packaged, whether finished or not, you are expected to submit it. Attendance equally is absolutely compulsory. 
70% attendance is the condition upon which a student will be allowed to write his final examination. Now, we have um, grading style or policy. Student's performance in this course will be through the following assessment model as specified in this table. We have first time attendance is five marks, chats, discussions, and forum that attracts 10 marks. Second term, assignment and computer-based test attracts 15 marks. Final examination, 70 marks. Cumulatively, you have a total of 100% marks obtainable. Now, these are the rules of engagement. Students who are late from class will lose the marks of attendance. Students who submit their assignments later than due dates will lose total marks obtainable. Students who are unruly during charts, during discussions, and other class interactions will lose one mark of the total marks obtainable, you know, in that assessment. All assignments for this course will be submitted electronically through the email provided in the facilitator's profile, unless otherwise instructed. Assignments too uh, must be submitted by the given deadline or special permission must be requested from the instructor before the due date. All students that have enrolled for this course are expected to maintain high level of commitment, responsibility, and participation in all learning activities. Academic dishonesty in this course includes the following. Please pay attention. It is very, very important. All classwork and individual homework should be done independently unless explicitly stated otherwise on the assignment instructions. The general solution strategy may be discussed, but solution must be written independently, meaning students are free to interact. They are free to get in touch with other, you know, students or whoever you think can be of any assistance, but it must be written independently as a student. And uh, if you discuss any of these problems with anyone else, they must be acknowledged by writing their names at the top of your assignment, labeling the collaborators. Now, the content of this introductory course in political analysis is as follows. We'll look at the meaning of political analysis, what it is, what it is it all about, what is it saying. We'll now approach the categories of political analysis. We have categories of approach in it and um, approaches itself. What are the approaches in political analysis? We'll look at it very well. Now, at the end of it all, we are expected that um, to know the meaning of political analysis. Explain the categories of approaches in political analysis. Assuming you are to carry out an analysis of a process, what are the approaches? Now, we look at the meaning. According to Alan Isaac, 1969, political analysis is a general strategy for studying political processes. Strategy, is talking about strategy. If a political issue is unfolding and you want to analyze it, you want to study it, how do you go about it? On the other hand, Vernon Van Dyke II, 1969, sees it as the criteria employed in selecting the questions to ask and the data to consider in political inquiry. If you are presented with a political process, you want to carry out an analysis, you go into the field, 
what are those things to look for? How do you gather your data? If you want to draw up a questionnaire, how do you go about it? What are those things to consider in drawing up a questionnaire for the purpose of political analysis? These scholars are talking about approaches and methods to the study of politics or phenomenon or a political process. While emphasis is an approach in a particular study could be economic or sociological data, another may focus on psychological and ideological factor. Because the approaches are different and cross-disciplinary at the same time, in the process of carrying out you know, political analysis, you can decide to ask, adopt sociological data or psychological factor is very, very paramount if you are using a psychological approach in the analysis of political process. In an approach in a political research or inquiry, it refers to a type of lens for focusing on a particular aspect of political life, meaning how do you want to look at it? How do you want to view it? You give it a focus. So, whatever approach you decide to adopt in your analysis is what we are talking about. Giving it a lens, giving it a focus. In an approach, it helps or leads the political scientist to concentrate on specific aspects of political phenomena, thereby conditioning his study. There are so many sides to an issue you want to analyze. So the focus you give it determines how it is viewed. Now, we have categories you know, of approach. It's not just one, two, or three. There are a lot of approaches while carrying out political analysis. However, the approaches can be broadly categorized into two. We have the normative approach, which seeks to describe and to prescribe standard of what ought or should be the right order or conduct. This is strictly an ethical issue. It is prescriptive. When you say normative approach, is prescriptive, it prescribes, and it is based on ethical issues. Is this right or wrong? Is this good or bad? Now, we have the empirical approach. The empirical approach emphasizes facts and statistical inquiries. It may equally be described as scientific approach. If you are adopting this approach in your analysis, it means you have to go into the field, collect data, collect facts, and back them up with statistical analysis. That is what makes the approach empirical, because it is based on facts. It is based on figures. We only have the issue of political scientists sometimes, you know, employing research approaches from other disciplines. Among them are philosoph philosophical approach, historical approach, sociological approach, economic, and of course, geographical approaches. That is why political science generally adopts or is referred to as cross-disciplinary study because you can borrow approaches from other fields of social science in carrying out analysis in political science. Now, the first approach we are looking at 
uh, in political science is the philosophical approach. Again, our scholar, Vernon Van Dyke, 1969, says, philosophy donates efforts to arrive at the truth through the use of reason. Study of the truth, inquiry to find out the truth through the use of reason. That is why we describe philosophy a lot of times as quest for knowledge. Quest for knowledge. And in the process, you use reason, deduction. You know? Then philosophical inquiries usually result in statements of preference, description of ideals, and prescription of values. Because philosophical inquiries are not value free. At the end of your analysis, it is prone to being laden with values. Then the application of the philosophical approach usually leads to a focus on the great ideas, values, and doctrines of politics and the reflections of great political thinkers. Because the great political thinkers are the scholars we described as classical scholars. And one has to understand them as the basis for political analysis. Because you have to adopt some of these approaches. The objective of such efforts have been identified as being to establish standards of the good, the right, and the just to appraise or prescribe political institutions and practices in the light of these standards. Because if you are adopting philosophical approach in your analysis, it cannot be empirical. It has to be value laden Now, we'll look at the sociological approach. As a discipline, Sociology studies human behaviors within the context of social environment. Its basic premise is that membership and interaction within human groups affect the behavior of the individual. Man is a social animal. Man lives in a social environment. So, if you are adopting this approach, your analysis of political events or processes, certainly man is the center of your attention. Political scientists who adopt this sociological approach therefore investigate issues like the relationship between social environments on the one hand and political behavior on the other hand. How does the social environment condition an individual? to behave the way he does, especially when it comes to politics. Such analysts make considerable use of sociological concepts like society, culture, status, groups, and role. They also employ sociological variables such as education, income, and so many other issues in their studies. Now, the next approach we'll look at is the geographical framework to politics. The geographical framework to politics seeks to explain political phenomena by reference to certain facts of geography, such as location, climate, rivers, mountains, seas, availability of natural resources, and so on and so forth. How does these geographical features play a role, you know, in how a country behaves towards others, in how other countries as well 
relate with that country. It's a very, very important factor, particularly as it affects students of international politics who rely on geographical features to explain and predict foreign policies of different countries. Of course, for instance, the presence of crude oil is generally perceived as an important element of power of the Nigerian state and a major determinant of its foreign policy. Uh, for those uh, who are old enough, recalled in the 1970s, Nigerian foreign policy at that time under late General Murtala Mohammed was said to be very dynamic. But one key factor behind the dynamism of Nigerian foreign policy at that time was availability of crude oil. It had a lot of value and we had a lot of money. So it propelled General Mutala Mohammed to take certain decisions because he had money. The money was there to back up some of the foreign uh, policy decisions he took. Recall, he was able to assist you know, some freedom fighters from South Africa. Nigeria was even given the status of a frontline state all because of the economic power which availability of crude oil gave to us as a country. Now the next approach we'll look at is the political economy approach. And um, the political economy approach derives generally from the writings of scholars like Kai Marx, uh, the famous uh, German political philosopher. The central theme of this perspective is that the mode of production in material life determines the general character of social, political, and spiritual process of life. Mode of production. If you are adopting this approach in your analysis, what is the mode of production within that society you are looking at? The political economy approach requires the analyst to take cognizance of the role of production, which refers not only to the state of the technique, but to the way in which the means of production were owned and the social relations between men which resulted from their connections with the process of production. You look at a given society. What is the mode of their production? Are their factories owned by individuals or government. That is very, very important. And that is the main theme in this approach. Then, Marxian political economy, in effect, provides a framework for an integrated study of political reality by re re reference to relevant economic, social, legal, and of course, moral factors. Now we look at institutional approach. This approach is also referred to as traditional approach to the study of political system. The institutional approach uh, is concerned with the formal description of the structures of government, like the political structures such as the executive, judiciary, uh, municipality, states, political parties, constitute the main focus, you know, in this approach. You look at your political system, the political, you know, institutions inherent in it. How are they? How do they function? Are they independent, you know, or are they in the hand of the government of the day? Are they free to take decisions? It equally studies the formal rules that govern the pattern of interaction and the relationship among government institutions. How do they relate with each other? Are they independent of each other? Or are they subsumed in one another? Can you differentiate them, you know, in your analysis? By, by looking at them, can you differentiate, oh, they are all separate, they are all individual. One weakness of this approach is that mere description of rules and procedures may never tell us enough about the behavior of actors in these institutions. 
that is one of the weaknesses of the institutional approach because it only describes this is how the judiciary is, this is how the executive functions, this is how the legislature is. It does not give cognizance to the people who are running the system. That way, the institutional approach had to be supplemented with good understanding of the various groups and individuals that make up the organization or institutions. For you to get it right in this approach is not enough to describe. You equally have to look at the individuals, the people who are running that system. Their pattern of education, their motivation and orientation, the nature of their personal goals and other environmental factors will certainly affect their role performance. If they are, you know, motivational, what is it that motivates them, you know, to perform the way they do? Now we equally look at the historical approach and um, it uses a variety of historical methods. A historical approach or method could just give a historical account of an event or just a timely survey of different views of the phenomena or both. It only describes, you know, it does not go into detail. It looks at an event, a political issue, a political process and goes straight away to describe it. The historical approach stresses periods, themes, roles of statesmen, social conditions or combination of these. The roles of important world leaders are stressed such as George Washington, John F. Kennedy, Winston Churchill, Nelson Mandela, who are they? What do they do? How have their personalities or their political views affected their countries? How did they carry out their governance? Why are they relevant in the scheme of things? Themes stressed in historical methods include isolationism, imperialism, colonialism, Neocolonialism, World Wars, League of Nations, United Nations, Cold War, Balance of Power, Globalization, and so many other issues. Basically, historical approaches look at issues like this in analysis. Focus on periods may stress certain periods of events as World War, 1914 to 1929, that's the First World War, and of course the Second World War, 1939 to 1945. This approach looks at issues like this. However, proponents of historical methods include Eugene Black, Bandex, and Barrington Moore.